of all, I want to thank the organizers for inviting. Uh, I really enjoyed this morning's talks, and uh, like just like every one of you, and I'm definitely learning a uh, second language. Um, I would uh, characterize myself as a uh, prostate cancer researcher with uh, a focus on uh, genomics. So uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, pretty much in the context of prostate cancer research, whether the findings going to be uh, going to apply in other contexts, uh, I'm really not sure. I guess one thing with uh, this affiliation with Hopkins is we have a long history of frozen tissue collection. And we have in the tissue bank about uh, 2,000 frozen tumor samples. And I actually took advantage of those. And in the past 10 years, I have been using frozen samples. So why would I you know, get into this trouble into FFPE, paraffin uh, blocks, for three specific reasons that uh, has something to do with my research interest. interest overall. First of all, I am in transition into analyzing small volume prostate tumors. We know those tumors, they were not harvestable, meaning they cannot be harvested for frozen tumor collection. The reason for that is we have to preserve the very small amount of tumor for diagnostic purposes. So we actually do not have the material to analyze those small volume tumors which I think you know, is really the key to address the modern uh, clinical problem of overdiagnosis and uh, overtreatment in prostate cancer. So that's in the clinical setting of prostate cancer. Second of all, I'm also interested in analyzing pre-malignant lesions such as high grade pain. And those lesions, they are very difficult even to identify in uh, frozen tissues because the free sawing process would pretty much destroyed morphology, you can't identify those lesions. So if you are able to work with FFPE, that's going to allow you to identify the molecular correlates of those defined lesions. Third, although we have tons of frozen tissues, the, you know, we still need more. And uh, you, if we can utilize those uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of specimens in the, in the archival, uh, blocks that would be wonderful. So those three reasons really prompt me to, to get into this area. So what are the problems? What's causing all those problems? So I basically define you know, those uh, pre-diagnostic uh, variables and you know, post-diagnostic variables. And uh, those variables, some of them can be controlled after diagnosis such as uh, storage time and, you know, you, of course, you can analyze the tissues with uh, relatively recent, you know, fixation. And uh, you can also analyze, you know, aged tissues. That's something you can control depending on what you, you know, what your research focus is. And you can, uh, you can control those. And uh, you can also control, you know, for prospective purposes, you can control storage condition. You can store them at room temp or you can store them at minus 20. You can control your only extraction methods. You, there are different methods to extract them. You can also control the platform of choice. But those pre-diagnostic uh, variables, they are hard to control. Unless you have data or you have some you know, political cloud that you can influence you know, the diagnostic setting or you can influence you know, the, um, the clinicians, those are, would be very difficult to control. And those you, you cannot control, you know, the physician, whether he's going to operate, how, how he's going to operate on the patient. And there are robotic uh, surgeries, there are open surgeries, and uh, we do know that is ischemia time is different from those two surgeries. It can cause, you know, delay in the uh, fixation based on how the tissues are processed. And this part, we actually control that very well in Hopkins, but they can always be improved. The fixation type, and the fixation time and tissue processes, those are all you know, in, the, in the pathology type of area. And we try to control them, but still it's, it's very difficult 
and you, you have to you know convince people that you know even to standardize the tissue processor it's you know you have to take into consideration of the economics you know how much it costs to replace the tissue processor etc so we try to work on one variable at a time in the hope that by uh, controlling you know different variables we can turn this uh, basically you know we always thought you know FFP tissues they are so bad that we can barely use them so they were really trash mine so by controlling the variables by improving constantly improving we can turn that into a gold mine 